A new lab is helping patients replace their missing body parts with 3D printed versions. Uh, the tie-up between Singapore General Hospital and NTU is also working on surgical implants, but it will also look at what's called bioprint human organs for transplant. To tell us more about this, we have with us Professor Paolo Bartolo from NTU and Associate Professor Go Su Yen from Singapore General Hospital. Welcome both of you. Thank you for coming you. this evening. Thank you. Uh, this question for both of you, well, we'll start with Associate Professor Go. Now, you've got your props in front of you. Very quickly, with these props, explain to us what 3D bioprinting is. Go. So, we have a very wide spectrum of um, medical 3D printing. Um, at the moment, the majority of the usage would be in printing surgical guides for cutting or anatomical models, like what we would have here, for example, if you have the bone and you are able to help the surgeon visualize where the blood vessels are and the nerves, and they can therefore plan the surgery with greater precision. And this may reduce the time that the patient spends in operating theater. And the next step we feel is to move on to the topic of bioprinting. And we have the expertise and it makes a lot of sense um, for us to work together with NTU to do this. Maybe Prof, you can tell us yeah. a bit more about that. So bio, bioprinting is a relatively new subset of uh, 3D printing for healthcare applications. Uh, in an early stage of, uh, of development, uh, but basically uh, within bioprinting, we use um, additive manufacturing machines to print biomaterials and cells uh, to create uh, tissues, to create organs, tissues to be implanted or to be used as a model to study new diseases, to study diseases and to study uh, drugs. So the, the, the growth in, in effect, I mean, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, bioprinting, you're actually growing living tissue. Correct. To be implanted correct. Where, where it needs to go. It's fascinating. Uh, uh, Associate Professor Go, you, you began by talking to us a little bit about the pieces that you've brought here. Could you take us through uh, uh, more of them uh, to talk about the material that's been used in this particular process and what they're intended for? Uh, we do have a variety of materials. Um, if we're just doing an anatomical model, it would be something as light as plastic. Um, we would then also consider if we are going to be printing something that eventually gets implanted into a patient, then we have to consider weight and durability, or also whether the implanted material becomes a scaffolding and eventually dissolves. So we have many possibilities. So it's not just about the process of printing or the fact that we can do it at the point of care in the hospital. It's also about integrating the knowledge that we have from the NTU team in terms of material engineering as well. Before we take that next jump, to bioprinting? There are two main uh, mm -hmm. properties um, that uh, uh, we, we require for a material. Uh, the first is uh, biocompatibility. So the material must avoid any adverse reaction or toxicity. Mm -hmm. The second, and this is more related to the materials used for bioprinting, they must be biodegradable. Uh, besides that, um, uh, we select materials uh, according to specific applications based on uh, mechanical properties, uh, chemical characteristics, so a range of properties that we need to consider. All right. Uh, sorry for cutting in like this. Now, we're in early stages yet, both of you have suggested this. And it's a little bit misleading for someone like me when I see or I think, oh, bioprinting is just printing that. But in fact, as you mentioned, it's printing biomaterial, yeah. which yes. can then be used Yes. For example, as a structure upon which something then develops, or in itself, it That's is right. a transplant yes. object. Yeah. So for medical science or for treatment, diagnosis, treatment operations, uh, if you could, and I, I, I realise this is a very vague question, if you could summarise what this might mean for medical advancement very quickly. It would really mean printing organs, um, which is a, a holy grail. At the moment, the best thing we would have is, you know, an, an organ donation, a transplant. Now we're talking about whether we can grow these organs, for example, a skin or a pancreas or a liver, or those cells in the lab, they would be compatible with the patient and we could implant them. Yeah, but we can, can consider also simple uh, devices. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, let me show, for example, this uh, ankle foot orthosis. Um, a unique advantage of uh, 3D printing is that uh, it allows us to develop uh, 
personalized uh, uh, medical devices. So devices designed according to patient-specific characteristics, needs, requirements. And, uh, and this improves treatment efficacy uh, through uh, additive manufacturing. It's possible to reduce costs. Uh, to give you an example, so this, uh, this is a, a, an ankle foot arthrosis that was uh, designed and developed in partnership with colleagues from the Singapore General Hospital for a patient suffering from a specific type of diabetes and uh, presenting uh, uh, limitations in terms of locomotion. And uh, um, it was possible to print this device uh, in nine hours compared to few days that uh, usually take to create such uh, devices. So, Professor Bartolo, that piece was specifically 3D printed for one individual? Correct. Because of his or her diagnosis? Correct. You talked before about biocompatibility. Tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, it, it may be a, a complex question uh, to ask, but how do you make those determinations? Yeah, so, so um, the material must be accepted by, by the body. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and should not create any reaction once, uh, once used. So this is what we consider as uh, biocompatibility so and not toxicity. Just to clarify, so you'd be printing something like that and putting it possibly into someone's body. So it doesn't actually look like that because it would be a biomaterial. The whole thing would go in. Yeah, so this is an external mm. orthosis, mm. but you would be thinking about printing um, like a structure, a scaffold, to replace bone right. yeah, or a solid organ. And that's where the biocompatibility is very important. Are we there yet? Not quite, but we hope to be soon. What will, what will it be dependent upon? I mean, So it's a long process. And yeah. um, in um, the majority of the cases, we are performing uh, preclinical studies in animals. Uh, so the next stage is human trials. Uh, right. Well, thank you both so much for coming in with all those very interesting props as well. A professor Bartolo from NTU and Associate Professor Go Suyen from SGH. Thanks so much. Thank you thank very you. much.